All right, this video is gonna show you how to make a reheat dehumidification control using this Wi-Fi relay pack. We're also going to need an Ecobee thermostat, but let's go over what this relay pack is. This is a Sonoff four channel Wi-Fi relay, uh, and it's very versatile. And we're gonna use this essentially to bypass the thermostat and energize Y1, Y2. If you have Y2, you can use the second relay for that as well as the W call. Now, some heat pumps require a G call in order for the fan to run. Others automatically run the G based on the Y call. I have a Bosch air handler. It does not need a G call when it gets a Y call. And so really Y1 is, is just running the air handler at its lowest speed. And when it gets a call for Y2, it runs it at high speed. Now, in the algorithm internally of that air handler, when it gets a call on W, it automatically runs the highest speed. So we don't need a G call here. We don't need to bypass that because we're getting that fan call to run whenever we call for either Y1, Y2, or W. What's cool about this relay pack is you can also turn on these relays manually just by pushing the buttons. They also connect to an app such as Ewe Link. That's an app that talks to this Wi-Fi relay, and you can also turn these relays on manually as well. You can also set up automations. Uh, but if you look at the individual relays here, we've got just common, normally open, normally closed, and we have that for four relays. We also have two ways we can power this module. One way is 9 to 23 volts DC. Well, I had an old DC converter laying around, and I just simply have it plugged in. If not, uh, you'll need to get something else to be able to give it a DC signal, but you also have the option of giving it 100 to 240 volts AC. So you could actually plug this straight into an AC socket using some kind of adapter. Uh, even 240, you could have the air handler power this module with 240. I chose to power it using DC, just made me feel a little bit better that I had all just low voltage here at this uh, module. But you do have that option to power it with high voltage AC. You're also going to need an Ecobee enhanced or premium thermostat. This is going to have the accessory terminal. And you're just going to wire it just like you would any other heat pump thermostat. I've got a two-stage Bosch, so I've got to wire up Y1 and Y2. But if you've also noticed, I've wired up my ACC Plus terminal. That is going to be used for our reheat dehumidification enable signal. Next, we need to set up our Ecobee. Now, this is not a complete tutorial about how to set up an Ecobee for a two-stage heat pump, but we're simply going to concentrate on the things that pertain to our dehumidification. For this two-stage Bosch, I need to make sure that I enable my Y1 and Y2 wires, and the Ecobee knows that it's a two-stage unit. We also have to make sure that the Ecobee knows that the wire that goes to the ACC Plus terminal is going to a dehumidifier. Make sure you select the one wire ACC plus that turns it into a wet contact, which will send out 24 volts. And we select that the relay state is closed when we want the dehumidifier to turn on. Finish setting up the rest of the Ecobee settings. The rest of these settings will not be available to you until you connect your Ecobee thermostat to the Ecobee app. Go to the main menu, select system, and then you'll see settings for your dehumidifier. You wanna make sure that your dehumidifier is enabled and then make sure that you set your humidity to 50. It's very important to set that exactly at 50. Now that brown wire that I showed you that came from the Ecobee thermostat, that is this wire right here, this brown wire that connects to the common. And all we're gonna do is daisy chain this brown wire to power each of the relays that we're gonna use. Basically that Ecobee thermostat is going to be the enabler for reheat dehumidification. If we're not getting 24 volts in this wire, then this relay contact will be dead, and it doesn't really matter whether we're calling for it or not, uh, nothing's going to happen because that 24 volts coming off the dehumidification terminal on my Ecobee is going to be powering this. Now, once we pull 24 volts off of that, then we're going to energize Y1 relay, and we're going to send 24 volts on this yellow wire, and this is going to connect to your Y1 of your air handler. For Y2, it's the same thing. It's just relay number two. If you have a Y2, this is going to connect to Y2 on your air handler. And then the third relay is going to be your W call. Now, if you have several W wires, like if you've got a 15KW or even a 10KW heater, you may be able to stage these Ws and be able to separate them out. That's going to make your reheat dehumidification a lot more effective because it's not going to be slamming heat on and off. You're going to be able to control it better. But again, we're just daisy chaining this 24 volts coming from the dehumidification signal from our Ecobee. And then when we get a uh, need for reheat, then relay number three in this case is going to close and we're going to send power back on our W to energize our strips. Now when our system is calling for cooling, then it operates the same way it always does. Same thing with heating. The only time that this control comes into play is when we're not calling for cooling and we need to continue to run the compressor in order to dehumidify. So, so regardless of if the thermostat is calling for cooling, if we have a need for dehumidification, our thermostat is going to send 24 volts on this brown wire and then we're going to engage Y1. 
and that's going to continue to run the compressor even past the point when it cycles off on cooling. But eventually, if we keep running the compressor, we're going to start overcooling the space. And so the automation that we're going to set up in If This and That is going to start kicking on our reheat to warm the temperature of the air back up. So let's take you through a typical cycle. You can see these LEDs light up. Let's say that our thermostat is set to 50% relative humidity, and it is above 50% in the space. Well, then we're going to be sending 24 volts on this brown wire here, and it is sitting here ready to be used. Now, the automation that we set up in If This Then That is also going to energize Y1. And regardless of whether we're calling for cooling at the thermostat or not, we are going to start calling for the compressor to begin a dehumidification cycle. Now let's say that the humidity continues to rise in the space. Y1 is just simply not enough to dehumidify the space. Well, eventually we're going to get over 60% humidity in the uh, space, and then we're going to kick on Y2. Now we start dehumidifying. Now the great thing about the if this and that automation that we're going to set up is that we also can reverse stage, meaning that as the humidity starts to come down, instead of running Y1 and Y2 all the way until it satisfies, we can cycle Y2 off. And we are still running the compressor, we're still delivering a cold coil to keep drying the space. Now let's say that we keep dehumidifying the space and it gets down to 50%. Well one of two things is going to happen, either the Ecobee thermostat is going to stop calling for humidity, so it doesn't matter whether this relay is closed or not, we're not feeding that relay 24 volts. Or maybe the if this then that automation is going to read that 50% humidity first and it's just going to cycle off our compressor. And then we're just going to keep running off the thermostat based off the temperature. Now let's run another scenario. Let's say that we're needing to dehumidify our Ecobee thermostat that's sending 24 volts here on the common, and we start calling for dehumidification. We're going to start overcooling the space, especially if it's a mild day. You know, the temperature in that space is going to start dropping a couple degrees below our desired temperature. And the automation that we set up in If This and That is going to start cycling on W to reheat that space. And then we bring the temperature back up to a reasonable uh, degree, and then it'll cycle off. And then we keep dehumidifying, the space starts cooling down again, we're going to need to start kicking in some more reheat. If you have multiple stages of reheat, that's even better. That way we don't slam that heat on and off. So we can either have a call for Y1 or Y2. Either way, if the temperature starts dropping in the space, our reheat will start cycling on and off based on that automation we set up and if this and that. The Sonoff 4-channel relay that we've been using connects to EWILink, among other apps. And EWILink is part of the automations that If This Then That can control. So that's how we're going to be able to control that 4-channel relay through If This Then That. Ecobee is also an app that talks to If This and That. Once everything is connected to the If This and That app, then we can build our first automation. The first one that we're going to build is to turn on Y1 or channel 1 of that 4-channel relay when the humidity gets over 55% RH. This is the if this and that trigger. We're going to select our Ecobee thermostat and then we're going to trigger it at 55%. That's the if this. The then that is the action that that trigger creates. Find EWILink among the recommended services. Then find the 4-channel relay that we've got set up. It's going to close the contacts on that first channel, or Y1, of that 4-channel relay. Once you finish the automation, if this and that, we'll actually put a description of that automation for you, so you can just check to make sure it's what you want. We next need to build an automation in case the humidity continues to rise, and we need to energize Y2, or channel 2, of that Sonoff 4-channel relay. Let's build our second automation. Repeat what you did for the first automation, but set the humidity level to 60%, and select channel 2 for Y2. The next automation we'll build is the reverse staging. As our humidity starts to drop, we want to first take out stage 2, but leave stage 1 running. That should happen at 55%. And don't forget that we're not turning on the relay, we're actually going to be turning it off. And that's just going to be relay channel number 2. We're going to leave relay channel number 1 running. The next automation that we'll build will turn off channel 2, or Y1, when the humidity gets down to our 50% target. The next automation that we'll build is for reheat. Now I like to keep my thermostat set to 75, that's where I'm comfortable. So I don't want the room to cool down much cooler than that. So I'm going to set my reheat to kick on at 73. That prevents short cycling, giving a little bit of a dead band there between 73 and 75. On the Sonoff relay, that's going to be channel 3. So when my compressor has cooled the room down below 73, reheat will engage. The final automation that we build turns off the reheat when we warm the room back up. So when the room warms up past 73, we're going to turn off channel 3 on the Sonoff relay. I hope this video was educational for you. I will end this video by saying this. I tried this for an entire dehumidification season from March to October. I wrote an article about it and reheat dehumidification in my climate despite me having a very tight envelope. But because I ventilate, I have enough latent load, especially on mild days, that I had to run a lot of reheat. And in a year's time, I spent almost $800 more in power 
than I would have if I would have used a dedicated dehumidifier. So especially in humid climates, I don't really suggest that you use reheat dehumidification. It is going to really drive up that energy bill. But let's say that you have a customer and they can't afford a dedicated dehumidifier. Maybe you can use something like this to at least start drying their house out until they can see that uh, a dehumidifier is going to be the more economical option uh, simply just because they're going to not like their power bills once they start running reheat. This is a great little setup to use under the right conditions in the right application so that we can deliver some dehumidification using the equipment that we already have just set reasonable expectations for your customers and just let them know that they will be paying more in their power bill there's no free lunch when it comes to building science removing moisture is removing energy and it costs energy to remove any kind of energy so hope you enjoyed the video hope you got something out of it feel free to build this yourself and let me know how it works